this video we're going to introduce simple objects and you may know that in a language like Java which is an object oriented programming language objects are kind of apparently a big deal we're going to introduce objects I'm going to introduce objects in a fairly non-traditional way we're going to do this in three stages first what I call simple objects um, which is simply the idea of bundling data together um, then we're going to learn about how to use say using smart objects uh, which is where we're going to learn that not only can objects be data bundled together but that objects can have some degree of intelligence they can have operations that they know how to perform that we can ask them to perform and so the second thing we'll do in the later set of videos is we'll learn how to use objects that know how to do things and in the third set of videos we're going to learn how to actually um, make our own smart objects so, so make our own smart objects um, and really what we'll be doing is making the classes themselves uh, but that's the plan so first we're going to focus today on just how do we bundle up data at all and I thought I'd start with an example of why we might want to bundle up data at all so suppose that I'm writing some sort of program where I have some coordinate axes and this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and somewhere I have uh, a line maybe. And on that line, let's see, I have a point at either end. Those kind of look like points maybe. And the point, at, let's say the point on the left is x1, y1. Right, those are the coordinates of the point on the left, and the coordinates of the point on the right are x2, y2. And the question is, the question is, what is the midpoint? What's, what are the coordinates of the midpoint? And so we're going to write a program to do that. And, or at least we're going to start writing a program to do that, and we're going to discover why that that is trickier than it might sound at first. So here we go. Public, static, public, so I can call it static, so I don't need to call it, well, you know, if you've been following my videos, you know I've been using static methods for everything. And the first time we depart from static methods will be when we see how to use smart objects, and then later how we, when we make our own smart objects. So at this point, all we've got is static methods. And the operation I want to do is, uh, I guess we'll call it midpoint. And midpoint is going to take in the co uh, coordinates of the first point and the coordinates of the second point, which we're, we'll assume are all integers. And let's see, what would I need to do to find the midpoint? And I'm aware I have deliberately left out the return type. So we're getting to that. How do I find a midpoint? Well, I need to find the average of the x-coordinates, average the x-coordinates, and average the y-coordinates. And since I know I'm going to need to average twice, that seems like an argument for maybe I should write a method that averages two values. So we'll just write a method here that takes in A and B and averages them together. And if you know the average formula, you can average two values together by adding them up, then dividing that sum by two, and then returning that result. Right. So that will average my two values together. Okay, so good. So now I know how to average. And so the midpoint is simply the point whose x-coordinate is the average of x1 and x2, and whose y-coordinate is the average of y1 and y2. So let's see. The midpoint, sorry, the, the x-coordinate, the middle x, is the average of x1 and x2, and the y-coordinate is the average of the midpoint, that is, is the average of the y-coordinates of the two points. And so we're all done. So we're just going to return... Uh-oh. You see where we're in trouble here? What I really want to return is a point whose x-coordinate is this and whose y-coordinate is this. In other words, I want to return two values, mid-x and mid-y. And the question is, can I return two values in Java? And the answer is, kinda, but not the way you'd want to. So there's no magic... There's no magic, uh, I would like to return x or mid x comma mid y or any anything like that instead what we do is we're only ever allowed to return one thing but we are allowed to bundle several things together to form one thing 
and then uh, return that one thing. So, if, for example, if uh, if you wanted to take all of your stuff, let's let's well maybe not all your stuff. Let's say you're going on a trip, and so you want to bring your toothbrush and your underwear and your camera and all these all these things so that you can have you know nice clean teeth while you go around taking pictures of yourself in your underwear or whatever you do on vacation and uh, you want to bring all those things but the airline tells you you're only allowed to bring one thing with you which one thing would you choose the toothbrush the underwear the camera no you're going to choose the suitcase and inside the suitcase you'll have all of those things right so that's the idea we're only allowed to return one thing but that one thing could be a kind of suitcase that contains all the other things. We could make an object, and inside that object we could store these two numbers, and that's what we're going to do right now. So, how do we make one of these object things? Well, the first thing we do is we define something called a class. So, in a file called... I'm, I'm going to make a point class. So, in a file called point.java, I'm going to define a class, and that class is going to look like this. So this is in its own file and I write public class point and we'll eventually see how to put all sorts of fancy things in a in a class but right now all I want to do is bundle two integers together and I'm going to do that like this. I want an integer which will be the x coordinate of the point and I want an integer which will be the y coordinate of the point. And that's it. That's everything that ever goes in this file. Right? So this is the only thing in the point.java file. And what I've just done is I've defined a new type. So now, what kind of types do I know? Well, anytime I might want to make a variable or a return value of an int or a boolean, I can now choose the type point. So we can make our own types. And that's, I think, the main idea of these classes. And when we make our types, what we're going to do is we're going to bundle two primitive types. So these are primitive types. Actually, not. it may just be that we're bundling one primitive type. Um, but ultimately, we're going to make bundles, perhaps bundles of bundles of bundles of primitive types. So at the very bottom are going to be these primitive types. And x and y are variables. They're called fields. So these are fields. And we'll talk more about fields. I should point out your teacher uh, or your textbooks may call them attributes, member variables, instance variables, and many other things, but I'm going to use the term fields because I think fields is nice and short and easier, but uh, you may find all sorts of other words that mean the same thing. All right, so how can we use point to make the midpoint? Let's, uh, actually, I think I'd like to, do I want to start with, let's start with what does it look like to use a point? one of these point objects I've just invented. And remember, point is not something built into Java. It's something I invented just now when I created this file called point.java. So, what does it look like to use a point? Well, I can declare a variable of type point. I've declared one called p. And when I want to create a point, I write new point, like this. And if you've, if you've caught on to the pattern, whenever we have parentheses, with nothing in them, there will probably come a time in the future when there's something we might put in those parentheses, but we're not going to look at that today. So we can make a new point. We can store in that point whatever the coordinates are we want to store. So I've just made a point whose x value is 3 and whose y's value is 5. So I've, I've represented the idea of the point 3 comma 5. But if I write 3 comma 5 in Java, that doesn't mean anything. There's no such thing as 3 comma 5 in parentheses. That doesn't mean anything in Java. But I can create a point object that represents that idea of the point 3, 5. And uh, so P, let's, uh, so P refers to a point object. P refers to a point object. So in fact, point is not a primitive type. It's called a reference. Oops, type, can I get the whole thing on the screen for you? It's called a reference type. Anytime we define a class, it will be a reference type. And we'll, we're going to see that reference types are actually f fairly tricky at first, but you'll get the hang of them. All right, so some more terminology. P, uh, so this, this object I just created is an instance of 
the point class. So I call point the class. It's a category of objects, right? So I could actually have more than one object. If we wanted to, we could make another object here, point Q. And, you know, I could start storing something else in Q, and we're not going to get into that. But, so I can have more than one instance of the point class, more than one example of the point class. And P and Q both refer, they refer to different point objects. So that's our terminology. And we have some syntax. So let's summarize what we, what we can type and what it means. One of the things we can do is we can make a new instance of some class. So this is a class name, such as point. And our example of that, we'll put an example beside each one, is writing new point. Okay, And let's just finish out the syntax, and then we'll start exploring them in the next video. If I want to get a particular field, I write some object expression dot some field name. So for example, over here, well, here, for example, p.x. But in general, uh, I could say, for example, system out print line p.x or something. I can use the value of that field variable. right? So this is an object expression. And that p is an object expression, right? p is a variable that evaluates to be a particular object. But I can have much hairier object expressions, which we'll see in a moment. Um, for example, I could have a method call that returns an object and then use that before the period. And then after the period, this is the, the name of the field. Okay, and there's one other thing I'm going to do often, and that's assign to a field. And actually, I should warn you, this is the operation that we will take away from you eventually. So this is a rare case of I teach you something, and then we're going to take it back so that you can't do it again. So this is what it looks like to assign to a field. And so we've got an object expression again. We've got the field name. And we've got some expression that evaluates to something of the right type to store in that field. So for example, p.x equals 3. All right, we're going to stop there. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use these objects. And in particular, I'll show you how to use this object to complete the midpoint method. And then we'll take a look at some of the, the many, many subtleties of working with objects.